yeah, it's a good place. Come on down to Cabo. You'll love it. What's going on, everybody? This is Island Hopper TV, and today we're going to show you 14 things to do down here in Cabo San Lucas. As always, there will be timestamps below, so do check that. First up, you've got to try the Mexican food, in particular the fresh-caught seafood that's going to come right out of the Pacific Ocean and Sea of Cortez. Fresh sashimi and ceviche all over this marina area. Yeah, so what we have here is a mix, ceviche, squid, shrimp, and fish. So let's see how good it tastes. Look at that. more of an authentic uh, restaurant. That's why you get so many different variety of salsa. Verde, rojo, pico de gallo, gallo uh, toreado. Toreado, chile, chile toreado, which is uh, chile and onion. It's a very nice place. Uh, let's see what the food looks like. Okay, I got the rib steak. Uh, which Volcano. one? I have the, um, the pastor. Pastor. This is called Volcano. It can be a vampire also. If seafood's not your thing, obviously they're going to have tons of different tacos. I really enjoyed those spare rib tacos. As you can see, you can also get a mix, which is going to be steak, carne asada, or camarones. Frijoles, guacamole, and pico de gallo, or salsa. Chorizo with some salsa. And it looks like some tortillas. Perfect. Look at that, boys and girls. Also, if you haven't already tried mezcal, this is 400 conejos, which is 400 rabbits from Oaxaca. And the best way to take one of these down is going to be rub a little bit of lime juice on your hand, put a little salt, lick your hand, and then drink the shot. And there's going to be mariachi going in the background. Now we're actually going to get on a boat and head out to El Arco. This is the southernmost point. This is a famous landmark down here in Cabo San Lucas. It's the arch. They do have a lot of seals and sea lions hanging out here, which would probably mean there's going to be sharks nearby. Although I haven't seen one of those, but I did see plenty of these seals. So the arch is known as Land's End Arch. Actually, it is the southernmost point where the Sea of Cortez meets the Pacific Ocean. This all happens right here in Cabo San Lucas. Visitors can take a boat or a tour, get right up close to the arch. You can actually get one of these boats that'll take you there right there on the beach. And there is a look at some of those sea lions doing some sunbathing. Now let's go out into the desert and do some off-roading. Here in Cabo San Lucas, this is very popular because of the surrounding desert and mountain areas that match up with the ocean, making for a really interesting ATV ride or UTV. Some of the most popular places to go are going to be Rancho Cristobal, where you get guided ATV tours around the desert landscape. Also, Sierra de la Laguna Mountains, very interesting. We personally went with cactus tours, that's what you're looking at here. But keep in mind, off-roading can be dangerous, so make sure you wear all your PPE. You can do it by group or per person. It is $125 per group, so that's a good price. They do have the Razor, which we were cruising, which is a side-by-side, -side, and they also have quads. I like this tour because you actually go through the desert and on the beach. Yeah, so when you come out here, you can also ride uh, camels, like this guy. Riding camels on the beach is about $109 per person. It comes with tequila tasting and a breakfast as well at the buffet. So you can see it's really popular. It's probably a once in a lifetime experience for most people to do this. They also offer the option to combine camel rides and ATVs in one day. So look into that. Just make sure to stay hydrated. Another thing to do out here is go out on a boat tour. I would really call it a booze cruise. We went out with Cabo Escape. They also have the big pirate ship, which you'll see out there and several other vessels. I really enjoy this. It is a party at sea as you can see and combo really is teeming with a variety of wildlife everything from whales to dolphins birds sea lions like we showed you earlier and you will see those animals as you're heading out of the marina out into the open ocean you typically go out towards the direction of the sea of cortez not so much out towards the pacific ocean because that's where all of the beaches are going to be as you head towards san jose del cabo and an additional activity that you will do when you head to those beaches is snorkeling. And you can see here we are getting in the water. They do require you to wear those life preservers. 
which is for your safety, but it does stop you from being able to deep dive down and see other things at the bottom. Cabo Escape actually took us to Playa El Chileno. This is actually right there at the Chileno Bay Resort area. You can stay at that hotel and just swim off the shore if you wanted to snorkel here. You don't necessarily have to go out on a boat. I just found it to be more convenient, more fun to do the booze cruise and the snorkeling all in one. Now let's get back out on the land and head north. We're gonna walk around, show you guys Toto Santos. We're also gonna go to La Paz. So yeah, uh, Toto Santos is totally a small town out here in Baja del Sur. Toto Santos is a really cool town, 47 miles north of Cabo San Lucas, which is about an hour drive. I do recommend coming up here because it is that slower pace for those of you who are looking for that. The environment is also very unique because it's like a subtropical climate here on the Pacific Ocean side. We did make a full video about Toto Santos as well as La Paz. You can check the description below if you wanted to watch that as we continue to show you around this village here. Very small and quaint. A lot of expats actually settle here and live here full time. One of the main attractions here is Hotel California. It's a historic hotel that's rumored to have inspired the famous song by the same name, Hotel California. You guys know the song, right? But mainly art galleries, local artisans are here, shops, restaurants, cafes. Nice place to really relax. If you wanted to go to the nearby beach, it's called Playa Los Cerritos. And they do have camping down on these beaches. There are many of them up and down this Pacific side of the Baja. The Pacific side and the Sea of Cortez side are a bit different in my opinion. All right, guys, we finally made it to La Paz. As you can see, we're on the beautiful harbor here. La Paz here is actually the capital of uh, Baja del Sur. And it's also on the Sea of Cortez side, so you have to cross the peninsula in order to get here. That drive itself is about an hour and a half. High speed travel is not permitted because they do have lots of cops, so beware of that. But when you're here in La Paz, you're gonna notice it is very relaxed, a little bit more upbeat than Todos Santos though. If you wanted to skip Todos Santos and just go straight to La Paz, it would take about two hours. The main area down here is called the Malacón, a waterfront promenade that stretches along the Bay of La Paz. While looking out into the bay, I saw dolphins and other marine animals hanging out. It's a very rich marine aquatic environment in my opinion. But down here you're going to have several uh, sculptures and murals and art installations that you can take a look at. Whale sharks are also found around here. The whale sharks are most commonly seen between November and April, although when you go out it's mother nature, so you're not always guaranteed to swim with whale sharks, but it's possible. Another place that people go is to Isla Espirito Santos, which is an island off Tecolote Beach. We tried to go over to Playa Balandria, but uh, they only allow 130 people in. Uh, they're trying to protect the environment, which is good, but not good if you don't have a uh, reservation or going with the tour. So we've come over here to a pretty cool beach, which is called Tecolote, which is actually just on the other side of the peninsula. Uh, there's lots to see and do up and down here. The water is clear. You can still go 30, 40, 50 feet out there, and it'll be no higher than your knee or your uh, waist. So beautiful water, feels good, just as good. It's just not Playa Balandria. With that being said, you can simply just do a beach day. That is a thing to do in all of Cabo San Lucas, Playa Balandra, which is considered the best beach in all of Mexico by many accounts. So you could just go there, although you do need a reservation for that, or come out here to Tecolote Beach. Cabo San Lucas has so many different beaches. It's just this whole area of Baja del Sur where they have these beaches. So. Just taking it easy one day, you can do that from your resort as well. Really nice. Sands, uh, it's good sands, like a crystal quartz kind of sand, not like uh, you get in the Gulf of Mexico where it's more silica. This one we're walking right now is called Playa El Medano, the one known as Pedregal Playa, more of a private beach for the resorts. But if you go out towards El Arco, they have several beaches. When it's low tide, there is beaches on El Arco's peninsula, and when there's high tide, the beaches kind of disappear, and it's sort of a little bit dangerous. Next up, we're actually going to do some whale watching. Whale watching is one of the most popular things to do down here, but it is seasonal. Most popular time to come here for whales is going to be from November until April, maybe a little bit into May. The whales down here, in my opinion, are the most happy, most entertaining whales that I've ever seen in the world. I used to live in Maui. They say that's the best, but the whales down here were just so active, I was amazed. 
There's several areas along the Baja that are world renowned for whale watching. They say down here, you don't watch the whales, the whales watch you. That just gives you an insight into how inquisitive, exciting these whales are. These are actually considered breeding grounds for the whales, in particular gray whales. Whale watching tours typically take about 2.5 hours to do it. Just depends on the tour you take, there are many. I've seen tours for $89 for adults and $59 for kids, then kids under four are free. Again, just depends. Check out Whale Watching Cabo if you wanted a tour. Next up, we're on to deep sea fishing here in Cabo San Lucas, one of the most popular activities for people to do while arriving, as well as locals. The average price to go out on one of these boats starts at about $320 for around six hours. Prices can go all the way up to $3,200 for a full day, but you're gonna find Dorado, Tuna, Wahoo, Sailfish, Marlin, all of that is down here in Cabo. Then there's shopping down here in Cabo. You have Luxury Avenue, located in the heart of Cabo San Lucas, Puerto Paraiso Mall, the Marina, Cabo San Lucas has a waterfront shopping center, and then there's San Jose del Cabo Art Walk. As we continue to show you around Cabo San Lucas here, I wanna let you know that we also created a travel masterclass. In order to access that, you can become a channel member and it comes with the membership free. Now let's talk about nightlife in Cabo and have some fun. They've got Cabo Wabo, which is a famous nightclub founded by Sammy Hagar. They've also got El Squid Row, which is a multi-level nightclub. Mandala, another popular upscale nightclub featuring a large dance floor and a VIP area. And many more, including the Pink Kitty. This trendy nightclub features international DJs and bottle service with another VIP area. Don't forget about the Baja Brewing Company. Most of this action can be found right next to the marina along Paseo de la Marina or Boulevard Lazaro Cardenas. If you guys are enjoying this video so far but feel like you want to know more about Cabo San Lucas, San Jose del Cabo or any of the areas, I will put links below to those videos, to the Cabo San Lucas Travel Guide, the San Jose Cabo Travel Guide as well as best places to go in Mexico. So do check those below but let's keep this tour moving. This is my friend who lives there, Eduardo. You can contact him on Instagram if you have any questions. His Instagram is Acapulco and Cabos. So now we're in San Jose del Cabo. It's a city located right next to Cabo San Lucas. This is actually where the main airport is that you arrive. So it is closer to the airport than Cabo San Lucas. Both are nice places to stay, but they have two different vibes. If you're looking for party, you wanna stay in Cabo San Lucas. If you're looking for resorts and relaxation that are close to the airport, then stay in San Jose del Cabo. San Jose del Cabo also has more of that Mexican village feel. So you're gonna get more of that authentic Mexico kind of experience than you would get in Cabo San Lucas, which has basically become more of an extension of California at this point. As you know, the area that we're showing you is called Los Cabos, which basically translates to the capes. It's the cape of the southernmost point of Baja. Now, let me tell you something interesting about the Baja. In the north, it's called Baja Norte, California. In the south, it's called Baja Sur, California. If you extend from Baja up north to California, that whole area is known as California. If it was a country, that is what it would all be called. So Baja, California and California. When coming down here, I would recommend doing seven days and trying to include La Paz and Todos Santos as well as some of the islands in the Sea of Cortez. I would say staying in Cabo San Lucas can be a good base camp, but you don't need to feel like you're stuck just hanging out there. Even though it's nice and you could easily do seven days at a resort in between San Jose del Cabo or Cabo San Lucas, I do recommend doing more exploring around the Baja. Now some resorts you can look at are gonna be Hilton Los Cabos. There's also the Westin. One and only seems to be very popular with people who are couples looking for a luxury experience. Also a lot of golfing down here if that's your thing. Anyways guys, thanks for watching this episode of Island Hopper TV from Los Cabos, Cabo San Lucas. If you guys enjoyed it, hit like, subscribe, consider becoming a channel member and getting access to that travel masterclass. I'll put those links below. See you guys on the next one. You can watch best places in Mexico or you can watch our other Cabo San Lucas tour here by clicking these end screens.